Hello, this is Nikki in Niagara coming to you from Niagara Falls, Canada. And today we continue with my coloring book collection and purge. I have a pile over here to the side which uh, hopefully we'll be able to do in the next half hour. And if we do these, then we will basically be half done. So, first of all, I'm going to show you this as best I can. It is a vintage coloring book here. It's called Antique Dolls Coloring Book. Six Charming Scenes of Beautiful Antique Dolls for All Ages by Red Farm Studio. And each illustration is signed Montero. So if that means anything to anybody, I can't really show you the pictures in here, but I think you're going to get a pretty decent view of them at this angle. If I can just keep that open. So that's the cover one. These are gorgeous, and I just don't know when and what I'll... Well, the thing is, what will I do with them once I've colored them? going to do these in alcohol markers and on a nice card and I like that it's a little bit uh, yellowed with age here. Then we have the same doll on a hobby horse with a rather creepy clown <laughs> here. I pretty much think all crowns, clowns are creepy. Uh, again, the same doll making supper in a humongous gown. And she's got her doll relative on the wall. My sister picked this up for me at a garage sale. Now, I'm not going to turn this sideways because it will just end up knocking stuff over. But uh, we have our doll, which I believe is this one, and her doll friend. And they're waiting for tickets at the train station, I guess. And here they are at story time. I love this one. I like books. It just is appropriate to me. I've just noticed that the pages are perforated, too. There's no date on this book. And since they're antique dolls, they, it could have been made any time. I'm assuming this is from the 70s, possibly the 80s. And the final one has Mama Doll with the baby. And I think this is our main character. And I think that was the relative on the wall, so that could be auntie. So mom and baby, sister and auntie. That is the family I've created here. And there we go. Then the back is just a piece of brown cardboard. Oh, it's not brown on this side. Okay, so that's pretty neat. Obviously we're keeping that. And it will have to go back up on the shelf or else it's just, just going to get damaged and in the way. Okay, the next one, I really have no idea why I have this one. Uh, they are postcards. Okay. There's no lining or markings on here, but this, easily turn it into a marking or they're four by six, so you can easily color them and use them as art cards. Now, I used to collect postcards, and I had some coloring postcards in that collection, but I stopped doing that years and years and years ago, though I do still have an affin aff aff affinity? <laughs> Is that even the word I want for postcards? Uh, 
Yeah, I'm not interested in Washington, D.C. I went there once. Briefly. Yeah, I don't want that. Okay, so next we have a Zen Doodle. And this one is Winter Wonderland. I've done a few out of here. This is Jody Best, the illustrator. Excuse me. And these are a lot of Christmas, actually, pages, but also plenty. Like, there's Christmas ornaments, but there's plenty, like a bird in a tree, that are just winter-themed. Snowman looking in at the fire. That's cute. I like that. So, yeah, this is a good one. And um, I forgot to say this, but... Uh, if you want a complete flip through of anything on here, just uh, let me know and I'll be happy to do one for you. Especially if it's a book that's not already, doesn't already have a decent flip on Amazon. Okay, so this is um, the same as the Passive Aggressive Coloring Book. This is the Hipster Coloring Book by Charlotte Farmer. And again, it's a... Uh, cover that you can color yourself and uh, again I got this so that I could color the images and cut them out and stick them out and glue them into my into my uh, oh, I, <laughs> junk journal there we go so yeah but if you think it's fun to make fun of the hipster life then you'll find this book funny. So yes, definitely keeping that. Then I have Cicely Mary Barker's Flower Fairies postcard book, and this is not even a coloring book. I just had it here because it was the only other po it's the only other postcard book I have, I think, at the moment. No, I don't. I have other ones. So yeah, I don't even know why this is here. But I, I like the flower fairies. I grew up on them as a child. And my mom grew up on them as a child. So, yeah, this doesn't even belong here. And, of course, I'm keeping it. And I'm going to put it somewhere where it uh, belongs. But we'll just put it here for now. Because I am going to be sorting the, the books out and putting them on my shelves in some kind of order. Now, like that washing book I have three more of these and I don't think I really want these either they all have gold foiling on it what was the did the DC one have gold foil on it yeah the DC one had red foil this is blue foil this is rainbow foil and this is rose gold so, I've never been to any of these places. Don't imagine I ever will. I'm not collecting coloring book postcards. And the pictures don't interest me. So, yes, those are going in the I don't want pile. Okay, so this is another book in the set from Pat Leisure and enchanting motifs that we got that we got rid of it's stock images and it's nothing that uh, interests me oh, why do I have a page marked oh yes I was thinking of doing the uh, mushrooms for March but I don't want to color in this book just to do that so I didn't keep the other two. I'm not keeping this. I may actually have the fourth book in the series. I'm not sure. Okay, now this next one I love. I love this one. This is called Adult Coloring Book Treasury, 110 Illustrations from 55 Artists. Now this is done on only the fronts of the pages. And is this a create space? Yes, it is. So it 
is an Amazon published book, but it has illustrations, well, as it said, a hundred from 55 artists, so uh, that would make 50, no, 100, 45 of them did two. I think that's how the math goes. <laughs> Someone's already pointed out that I can't do math on camera, so yeah, I, I can do math, but uh, obviously not on camera, so let's hope that was right. I forgot what I said, and I'm not going to calculate it again. So yeah, lots of really interesting pictures in here with a wide variety because they're all from different off. Oh, I was going to say author, and oh, it bugs me so much when when colorists, like, I'm a book person, I used to be a bookseller for many, many years, and so it, it's just one of my pet peeves when people call an illustrator an author. So yeah, look, you got grayscale, that looks like a photograph to tell you the truth. Uh, this one's pretty complicated. Mandala. Let's see, this is Kaylin Watchhorn. Again. John Ward. I love this. I think that's why it's ticked off there. I've done some out of here, and I think, I think there might be one or two that are started. This is John Ward again. Andrea Vukajink. Andrea Vukanjink. And that would be again. And this doesn't give an author, it just says it's from the Doodle Craft Adult Coloring Book. That must be what the extra ones are. That's the same. This is by Tiger Lynx. Tiger Lynx. Terry Sherman. That's nice. Terry Sherman. So, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Did I do that? I must have been drunk or half asleep. <laughs> I did do it, though, because that's the kind of, uh, that's the kind of patterns I like. Yeah, well, we'll just close up on that. So that's going in my keep pile. Now, I'm not sure about this one. I got this from the dollar store, and I don't think it's a real book. I think it's just, well, I mean it's a real book, but I think it was just published for the dollar store market. It is called, sorry, Color Therapy, the Anti-Stress Coloring Book, Coloring for Peace and Relaxation. 32 amazing designs. Okay, so no information. I like that. I think that's the same picture that was in the other one that I liked. So these are stock photos and it's the bindings coming apart. Yeah, it doesn't even say they're stock photos. So, yeah, it's all that kind of thing. Though, that girl was pretty. That looks like somebody's art. I think I've seen that picture before somewhere. Okay, so we'll just call that not interested. Okay, so now I have a postcard book that I am going to keep because it is Tomislav Tomic's New York from Pictura, the Pictura line. Some of the books were turned into postcards. So each page is single rather than folding out. It's not attached in here, but there is a glue block holding them together, but they'd be easy to tear out. This is nice, nice paper. It's not watercolor. It's uh, more like a marker board. Very thick. So 
uh, uh, I doubt I will ever color those, but I may just use them as postcards. It doesn't say which other ones are. So, uh, yeah, that goes in the keep pile, which is getting too big. Well, I guess the object here is not to get rid of all my bookmark, uh, my bookmarks. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, it's just one of those days. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know what I was saying. Here's another one that I talked about yesterday with the Escaped Oz. Uh, that is done by Good Wives and Warriors, which is a uh, team up of Becky Bolton and Louise Chapel. It is an experimental collaborative approach to illustration and installation, which has led to exhibitions and a wide range of products all over the world. So as you could guess, this one is a take on Scrooge's Christmas Carol. So very Christmassy. I'll keep that. This will be fun to color in at Christmas. I've already torn out. My sister did that. She did another page in here which I tore out and put in my book. And these even come with a bookmark which I think is cute. So keep. Okay, so I am a DC Comics girl. I do not like Marvel. I do not watch the Marvel movies. That said, I don't even watch the DC movies because they're not canon to the comic books. They have absolutely nothing to do with the comic books. Yes, sometimes after a movie they will write comic books to deal with the movie, but they're not part of the normal story and that's what I'm very serious about my comics, okay? So don't, don't mess with me. <laughs> that, I was going to say that said, but I already did. So I was wondering whether I was going to keep this, but uh, uh, there's a lot of really cool Wonder Woman stuff in here. And uh, these old covers will be fun to do. Is this just a Wonder Woman book? Superhero coloring, creative fun for superhero fans. Superhero coloring. On the back, it's all pictures of Wonder, Wonder Woman, though. With awesome action pages, heroic rescue, scenes and pictures that really pack a punch, the ultimate DC superheroes are waiting to be brought to life with color. Well, who? We've got Supergirl, Superwoman, and... Uh, I want to say Catwoman there, but she's not a, she's not a, um, super family villain. She, she belongs in the Batman-verse. Oh, well, yeah, well, there she is with Robin. Hey, they're all Wonder Woman posters. Whoa, there's, there's Batman and Catwoman. Woohoo, baby, I love that. Oh yeah, we got a really mod Wonder Woman there. Oh yeah, so the book features Wonder Woman. Even though it doesn't say it does. I will definitely keep that. Okay, so we have another Zen Doodle book. And this one is Majestic Dragons. And it's illustrated by Antonia Cardella. Fantasy themed things aren't really my cup of tea for coloring. Um, now I like fantasy books. I, I go off and on. Like there was one point in time when I read nothing but fantasy with some sci-fi thrown in. And then I got to a point where all, all I did was read, yeah fantasy books. And that lasted quite a few years. Now all I read are thrillers <laughs> and true crime. 
I don't know. Some of these look like mazes. I mean, it's a nice book, but am I am I gonna color it? That's the question. If I didn't have this, I don't think I would say, "Oh, I need to color a dragon." Nah, nice book, but give it to someone who will color it. Okay, so now I got Color London. 20 views to color in by hand, illustrated by Henny Hawthorne. And this has French flaps. Nice looking book. An expensive one, too. One sided. Very intricate. I like all things British. I am British by birth and citizenship. Moved here when I was a toddler. Is that a poster in the middle? Oh yeah, a poster of London Bridge. And on the other side, yeah, not so much a poster. Perforated. Hmm. They're so intricate. I like coloring buildings, though. Archaeology is one of them. Archaeology, okay. Yes, I'm interested in archaeology, but architecture is what I meant to say. And I'm interested in architecture. Hmm. I, I wish I could hear what you guys were saying. Are y'all going, keep it, keep it. Or are you going, give it to me, give it to me. <laughs> I'm going to keep it. Next time I go through my books, if I haven't colored in it, that's when I will not keep it. Okay, so we have more in the Just Add Color one. This is Mid-Century Modern. And I was using this one as a practice book, so I've got some of the beginning pages in here that have been done. Couple. That was my first ever attempt with uh, alcohol markers. That was back in uh, 2017, it says. And I was trying out stuff I got in a subscription box on that one. And this was trying out the, the uh, Posca glitter pens. They're nice. So yeah, definitely keeping that. And this one is by Jen Ski. She did another one of the she did another one of the uh, mid-century modern style. So yeah, that's a that's a series that I am going to continue collecting. I'm gonna have to look and see what I don't have. This is the Toki Doki coloring book. Seriously, I don't even know who or what Toki Doki is, but I think it is so cute that I mean with all the things I'm interested in I like kawaii too very much I just saw something jump across my table no unless it continued on its way yeah I'm keeping that that's adorable I haven't done anything yet it's Italian Websites in Italy. Huh. They've got kawaii in Italy. Yeah, I'm going to have to hurry. If uh, I'm going to get this pack done here. Well, we'll just have to go over the half hour mark. Okay, so this is David McKean. I had to get this one. And I, um, it's the fair comes to town. And uh, I had a hard time tracking this down. So, some of these I have the British edition and some I have the American edition because A, uh, only a handful of titles were published in America. And uh, B, uh, I don't think that they lasted very long at, on their first run because 
they, they were all only available through the secondhand market when I was looking for them. So yeah, that one took me a while. A couple of them I paid way too much money for, but I wanted them. And others I got for really good prices. Okay, this is Mattia Adelson's Traffic. This one's very different than the other ones. It just has, um, it just has scenes from a city and all the traffic, but there's things like giant many-legged creatures, dinosaurs, elephants, and the like. Uh, walking around and doing things in the city too so I like that one. Oh yeah I said I wasn't gonna flip through these and that's gonna take me a while if I do okay so keeping all these next ones to show you what I have this is Anne Yvonne Gilbert's English Country Home now some of these were printed in in uh, the US like I said and when they were their titles were changed so you have to you have to go through that too if you're from North America because here in Canada we either get the American versions or the British versions of books I think it depends on publisher and uh, yeah I don't really know what the situation is now because I've been out of book business for too long. Okay, now this is Sean Tan's Metropolis. Now, two things here. I just absolutely love Sean Tan's artwork. And secondly, Metropolis. Yes, I was there. So, it's not really about Metropolis, the movie, but it does have some kind of weird animal steampunk kind of vibe going on. Yeah, love that. Oh, I hear I am flipping through them again, but that one deserved it. Then we have Deborah McFarlane's Midsummer Night's Dream. Then we have, see, I think the American ones are published by Walter Foster. That's how you know they're gold like this. And they also put the illustrators in tiny little letters on the bottom here because these are British. Most of these are British children's authors. Uh, oh, British children's illustrators. And uh, Americans won't have heard of them, so their name is put small. So this is Levi Pinfold, and this one is Coloring Medieval Times. Uh, then we have Narut Putapipat. Hope I said that right. Coloring Fairies. And we have Anne Yvonne Gilbert again, Coloring Knights. Then we have Tomislav Tomic in Coloring Paris. And then we have... Thomas Flintham, A Stroll in London. This one had its title changed. Did I? Did I say a London one already? No, I didn't. That was a different London book. And John Howe, Coloring Dragons. The title was changed on this one. In in Britain, it's Draconis. It's, you know, Latin, I guess, for dragon. Why does North America need to have the Latin word changed? We're not that stupid that we need to have, that we can't figure out that a book about Draconis is about dragons. And then there's this one. Sophie Blackall Street Parade. This one's very different from the others too because it's um it's in a childish style. This one could be colored by a could be colored by a child. It's much more simple. And the backs of these um, do have illustrations on them here and there, but they're well. It looks like this one has um, drawing activity. It's not stuff that 
you're, you know, going to be worried about covering up if you use alcohol markers. So, I think that's the end of my collection. I may have one here and there. We've already done five or six books, so... Yeah, it was nice that those were all together. And I think with that, I'm going to start a second pile down there because I am keeping these next ones. Oh, do this one first. Another one. Wayne Anderson's Enchanted Forest. See, on the British ones, the very first thing is the illustrator. And then it's his book, Enchanted Forest. Okay, this one's really cool too because it's done in a different, st very different style. See, it's all, is gray, gray line work, which just gives it a completely different look. It's sketchy too. Okay, I won't open them anymore. Okay, so now the next thing I have is, yes, The Night of the Living Dead Coloring Book by Jordan Colton. And this is cool. It uh, has pictures on this side and the story on this side. So you can read an abbreviated story. And if you want to color the pictures, you're not wrecking anything except wrecking the book's story value. They're not very complicated pictures, but yeah, zombie pictures are cute. And this guy has done a whole bunch of horror books. And he's got a set of Krampus ones, too, if you're into that. Oh, it lists three of his other books on here. Uh, this one, the, one of the Krampus books, and Manos, The Hand of Fate, which is uh, an old horror movie. So he's an indie author, so go check him out just for, to give him some encouragement. Okay, so back to a couple more issues of the Do Magazine, because like I said, I had the first seven or eight, or nine, this is eight, issue eight, and that's summer of 2017. Got something marked in here. I'll fold it up. Hmm. I like that page. I don't know what I was doing with it. Oh well. And then I have another one. This is issue 6, winter 2016. Okay. So, I've already stated I'm keeping the magazines. Okay, so now I have a Renoir coloring book and this is from somewhere fancy. Oh, it's Pomegranate Kids, The Barnes Foundation. It's a really nice wraps on it. Okay, so <clears throat> the front and the back have small little prints of the work that's in here so that you can color them the same if you want. And the pictures are very simple. They've been brought down to the basic uh, line art. I suppose the book is aimed at children, but when you have a basic thing like this, it's good for watercoloring. Gives you more opportunity to do your own thing with it. See, so, yeah, I haven't done anything in this one. Don't even know if I would. Not a big fan of Renoir. Just people and flowers. Yeah, but the only portrait artist that I like is Hans Holbein from the Tudor times. Okay, so now I got it. I got some kids' books here because um, why not? So this is emoji color, and this is a uh, activity book as well. But uh, some of the pictures in here would be fun to color cut out and put in my put in my junk journals so this is by imagine publications and it is a registered trademark of the official emoji brand 
just in case you wondered. Then I got a Raggedy Ann and Andy, which, you know, I just have to have because I like them. And these are actual fabric stickers. So that is cool. I think my sister gave me this one. Oh no, we were at a garage sale and she found it. So the pictures are by Danielle Daniga, in case she's still around. And I think this is an, yeah, this is an activity book too, so. It's got things besides the pictures to color. Oh, that's lovely. Love to color that. And there they are with the sock with camel. Yeah. Okay, so keeping that. I'm keeping too many. Okay, so National Geographic's Animals of the World coloring book. This is nice paper. So these are all realistic animals. I, I can handle not having this. Yeah. So yeah, this is a... Uh, this was... It, it's an official National Geographic book. Okay, then... I have several of these books by Fabiana Atanasio. Just like everybody else. <laughs> Done a few pictures in them here and there. The uh, covers, I don't know, that is, that is like, you know, so big I don't think it's considered a French flap, but just for the sake of easiness, we'll say it has French flaps. All my posters are still in here. But you know what I was thinking the other day? Is I think I'm going to take one of these posters out of one of these books that I, that has posters in it. And I'm going to put it up on the wall in my bathroom on the on the main floor of the house. It's it's just a half bath. There's no sh no tub in there or shower. And uh, I'll put it on the wall and um, I'll put a container of some pencil crayons and then anybody who goes in there can uh, color a bit when we have company or a party or some, not that that happens very often but it has happened uh, people can color on it I just think that would be cool to see who colored on it so I guess since I have plans for the poster that I'm keeping my book yeah I like these I usually don't like the storybooks. I don't know if I have a Joanna Bats, whatever her name is. I think I may have one of hers, but she, she's just not my style. This is, you know, a lot like it, but I like the classics. So yeah, I'm just looking at it, trying to trying to convince myself that I don't want it, but I do. But you know, I will have to have colored in these some of these books for me to keep them next time. So here's the other um, Dreamscapes book I have, and it looks like I used it to color alcohol markers on because it's all stained with ink. On the front cover. Oh, smooth move. Okay, so there's one that's colored and hasn't been cut out. I wonder what markers those were. I used a couple of alcohol, but what were the other ones? Hmm. They bleed through anyways. So... This type of thing... I don't like or this this is starting to get into something I would like no no okay I like that no no I kind of like that no I'm not keeping it Okay, so that was both the Creative Haven books that I didn't keep. Okay, so the rest of the Somerset Studio coloring books. 
that I have here. So I think I have the first five, and I think I've shown you two already. So this should be them all. Why did I have that one bookmarked? I don't know. Okay, so yeah, I've done stuff in these and, and torn them out like I told you in the first, in part one, but that's what I did. So yeah, I love these. I love them because they're well made. The paper is thick. They're only on one side. And what I really like is the collection of authors. And you turn the page and you get something completely different style, different, did I say authors again? illustrators. Oh, you know, I can't get mad at other people who do that because I am doing it myself and I know the difference. Ah! Oh well, we're done. Next time I'm going to write illustrator slash artist so that I can call them that and not authors. Oh. So my keep pile is big, but it's not overtaking anything, so we're doing good. So I'm still hanging on to this one from part one because it is a mini version of three other books, and I have two of them. We are standing by to see if I have the third one that's in there. So we have just about hit the 30-minute mark, and we will by the time I've finished yabbering. <laughs> So, oh, no, we have. We're coming up to 45 minutes. I better, I better end quickly. Okay, so that's the end of part two. And I didn't get rid of many, as many books as I did in part one, but I have a decent amount over there to feel good about myself. So uh, we will continue on, and I figure it will take two more videos to do this if I keep them at this length. So in the meantime, until next time, bye-bye.